the season's over, but stay well, guys, because that just means we get to the best part. Talking about the season in all its entirety. So, let's go, here on Comic Universe. What's up guys, it's Jay here from Mysterious Reviews for the Comic Universe, and welcome to the web's first must-see comic and nerd culture show. I'm Dr. Jay, and as you know, I've got a PhD in nerd culture, and of course I should know, because I printed it out myself. How's it going, you guys? We have finally made it. Young Justice Season 3, Outsiders, has finally come to a close. So, you know what that means. I am here to discuss the season in its entirety. Of course, that means full spoilers ahead. So if you have not seen Young Justice Season 3, what are you doing? It was an amazing season. Highly recommend it. So definitely watch the season first. Hop on your DC Universe app. Borrow somebody's password. Do whatever you gotta do. Then watch the entire season and come back here to tell us your thoughts and feels and predictions about Young Justice Outsiders. So without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about it. Now, of course, I did individual episode reviews of every single episode over on my main channel, Mr. J's Reviews. So I'm obviously not going to go like in depth about every single episode. I mean, they're like 26 episodes. We're not going to be here for like over an hour. I mean, some of you guys might want to stick around, but I don't have the time to record for over an hour. So basically, this is more of just kind of a broad strokes review of what I thought about the season overall as a whole. So I'm going to be talking about stuff I liked, some problems I had, and mostly what I'm going to be doing is talking about a lot of speculation in terms of season four because we do not know what the subtitle of season four is nor what exactly the main direction of season four is going to be so let's go ahead and talk about the season as a whole so let's talk first half versus the second half honestly i feel like the first half was kind of weak in comparison to the second half i feel like the plot didn't really start to really get rolling until the second half of Young Justice Season 3, but uh, that's just me. There were episodes that were complete filler, like the uh, Harbor Security episode. That really didn't do anything uh, for the plot of the story. I mean, we got to see, like, Dick sort of lead a team, I guess, and, you know, we got a little bit of information about, like, the tech used for meta trafficking, but that bit of information could have like been tacked on to the beginning of the following episode. We didn't need a whole episode just to find this out. I feel like that episode was kind of pointless. There were a couple kind of just meandering episodes in the beginning. I get it. Like the first couple, you want to reintroduce the characters and stuff. Dope. But like the pacing of that first chunk of episodes was pretty off. Not gonna lie. But also, like, one of my issues with Young Justice pretty much ever since season two, if I'm being honest, is uh, the time jumps. So, like, I don't mind the time jumps. I like seeing, like, things progress and, like, our characters getting older and, you know, you know, time moving forward and other progress, like, uh, progressions and, like, other stuff happening. But at the same time, like... When you jump that far forward and there's so much stuff that's gone on, like, unless they release a tie-in comic like they did with, like, the Young Justice series between, like, seasons one and two and how they had, like, the video game and stuff like that to tie into that as well, like, we don't really get much information about, like, the gap in between. I mean, yeah, we got that one miniseries, which was pretty solid, but all that really told us is how Connor and McGann forgave each other and got back together. That's sweet, and of course, you know, I support Super Martian, but, like, I want to know, like, how some of this, like, major, major stuff happened. Like, you know, Calder becoming Aquaman is kind of just like, oh, he's Aquaman now. Like, we don't actually get to see like him taking up the 
armor and the title and Arthur Curry stepping down to full time become king. We don't get to see that. Um, also, not that I have a problem with it at all, but like Calder having a boyfriend, you know, I appreciate, of course, the diversity and like, of course, you know, Jackson Hyde, the character who like Calderon kind of takes a little influence off of is also by in the comics. So I get it, but we never saw any indication that he was into dudes at all. Again, don't have a problem with it, but like, you know, when he was a kid, all we ever really saw was, you know, him and Gar or Garth being both in love with Aqua Girl, right? But we never actually see him like, you know, interested in guys. and. I'm gonna keep saying it. I don't have a problem at all, but like, it just kind of came out of nowhere. I mean, yeah, we got the one episode where we got to see them interact and it was really cute and I like their dynamic and their relationship seems pretty awesome, but at the same time, it just, again, came out of nowhere. <laughs> like, I would like a little bit more explanation, a little bit more world building on some of this stuff, right? Like, example, you know, Babs is, Batgirl in season two and she's Oracle in season three. Now, obviously comic fans know what happened. We don't need things spelled out, but like I would like a little bit more of that gap filled in. That was definitely a, a problem I had just as a general kind of nitpick with season three overall. Um, I loved how the characters were handled. I thought the new characters were, you know, handled really well. Forager, Halo, Geoforce, Terra. I loved that they went in a completely different direction with Terra and that Anakin Skywalker style swerve with Geoforce was pretty dope. I loved it. You know, I definitely feel bad for the guy, but it makes sense for his character and I really enjoy, you know, the way they're playing it. So that was really cool. I love this version of Cyborg they created and how they like use the apocalyptic tech, how they tied his story in, how he was, you know, coming into his powers. All that stuff is really strong, really well done. Like that a lot. Of course, we got resolution for some of Connor's story as well. Superboy, you know, him finally fully accepting who he is as a person, you know, a genomorph. All that stuff is great. But there's also one other big thing that I had a problem with is like the dark side stuff. You know, it's so cool, right? You know, everything from like the promo art, all the trailers that hyped us up for this season to begin with, and like, you know, a lot of the background plots that were happening were building up towards dark side, building up towards dark side. Apocalypse is in the intro of the season and we only see dark side when he is interacting with vandal savage he doesn't even really say a word we see you know granny goodness you know laying prostrate or prostrate like begging for forgiveness from dark side but other than that we don't really get to see dark side in action and this is a freaking season all about apocalypse now granted i know dark side is like a huge like world ending threat and they're probably building up to him and you know that's probably going to just carry over into the next season so i'm not really that worried about it but like the fact that you put so much emphasis and stake on apocalypse and dark side and you barely even really get to see dark side doesn't really make any sense to me I do like a lot of the threads they have building for the next season. I still think Wally's going to come back. There's still kind of that fleeting hope in the back of my mind that, you know, Wally could possibly return in season four. I mean, granted, like, I am honestly okay if he doesn't come back because that was some genuine closure. Even if it wasn't real, I feel like that scene with Artemis really kind of helped fans and you know Artemis herself take the next steps to really move forward and honestly like as a Wally fan Wally is my favorite character on Young Justice and he's my favorite Flash so of course I want Wally back but like I feel like it would kind of undercut the power of that scene if they brought him back so honestly as much as I'd love to have him back 
I'm okay with him just staying gone. And, you know, Bart still continuing that legacy. I think it's still pretty solid. Um, the Outsiders as a team is really cool. And I like, you know, by the end, the status of the league, you know, you know merging everything together. Um, Wonder Woman, Calder, and, you know, McGann stepping down and Dick and Jeff and, you know, Connor and the others like stepping up to take over really cool i like how this ends and you know it's kind of at a standstill you know both sides have taken positives in one way or another and both sides have taken negatives so we're gonna have to see how this game continues to play out moving forward i'm definitely really interested Overall, I still really enjoyed this season despite the problems I had with it. And obviously there are, you know, so many really good plot lines just, you know, laid ready for the next season. Like obviously Red Hood was hinted at heavily. We got to see both Young John and Baby Damien as well. Uh, we got to see a Legion ring on the waitress in the diner at the end of the finale episode. And, you know, we got to see Slobo or Lil Lobo be born and crushed by Lobo at the end credits. So I thought that was pretty funny. But overall, again, really enjoyed the season. Had a few of my problems with it, but, you know, nothing's perfect. Let me know what you guys thought about the season in the comments down below. As always, don't forget to leave this video a like to let us know you enjoyed it. Because the likes really do help. They help to spread the video all throughout the algorithm. And to make sure they are shared and recommended to other Young Justice fans, much like yourselves. So, you know, if you enjoy the content here on Comic Universe and you want to see more stuff from myself, DPZ, or C-Dubs, be sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified every time we upload new videos. We've got plenty of great content for you guys covering, like, every nook and cranny of nerd and pop culture. We do reviews, news, and so much more. So like I said, if you like what we do here and you want to see more from us, be sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video or one of my co-hosts uploads a new video as well. So in the outro card, I will leave linked a video YouTube series algorithm, things you might like, which I hope you do, and I will leave linked our latest upload in case you're new to the channel and want to see what we have to offer here. But until next time, guys, this is Jay from Series Reviews, and like I always say, once a comic geek, always a comic geek, and once a Young Justice fan, always a Young Justice fan. Hopefully, I'll see you guys next time in the universe. Stay crashed. Till next time, peace.